Hi there, it's Steve Better here from Autodesk in the UK. I um, want to spend a little bit of time having a look at Autodesk Inventor Publisher. If you've not seen Inventor Publisher before, it's uh, a newly available product that's currently being trialled on the Autodesk Labs website, which is labs.autodesk.com. An Autodesk Publisher is all about extending the communication from your Inventor models. As you can see here, I've got a, uh, a little model of my son's forklift truck toy that I've modelled an inventor. I've also created the detailed drawings for that. But what I want to do is create a manual that we can use to uh, to give out to people who want to take apart the, the, the forklift truck or put it back together. An inventor publisher allows me to do that really quickly and really easily using directly the, the data that we created inside of inventor. We can insert the inventor assembly, the IAM file, directly into inventor publisher. I can specify the appearance of the model so I've got a whole host of different appearances that I can choose from on the list there we can modify those appearances we can create new appearances etc we can set ourselves a ground shadow again so we can get the look and feel for this model exactly as we want it um, but again we're working inside of Inventor Publisher here not inside of, of Autodesk Inventor so this means that those people that are actually wanting to do the technical illustrations, service manuals, etc., can do that at the same time that the engineers are still working on the data inside of Inventor. Now, you may notice there that I'm actually using the new marking menu, um, which has been developed as part of the Inventor Fusion interface. Well, we've taken that interface and that marking menu and we've added that directly into Inventor Publisher to make it really quick and really easy. As you can see, all I'm actually doing is using mouse gestures to select the commands that I actually want. I'm not having to actually go and select. All I'm doing is I'm moving the mouse down to create a new shot, and I'm moving it up to the 11 o'clock position to move the components. The more you use these marking menus, the quicker you get, and you actually get to a point where you can't really see um, what's going on because you're just moving that quickly um, and accessing the commands that quickly that you're just you know, working very quickly through what it is you actually need to do. Now all I'm doing here is I'm just manually creating an exploded view inside of Inventor Publisher. Now I could create this as an automatic explosion if I want to. I could just select the, the complete assembly and have Inventor Publisher create the automatic explosion for me. But I like to, uh, to, to have a little bit more control over what it is I'm actually doing. So I'm just asking um, Inventor Publisher to move these components. I'm just manually moving these out to position them exactly where I want them. All I'm doing is I'm just selecting each of the components and then using the little move tool to move it along the axis that I require. So I'm just moving those nuts off the side. We'll take those side beams, move them to the side. You just notice there I created a new shot. Again, just drag the mouse down using that marking menu. That creates a new shot for me. And you can actually see across the bottom there my shots as I've been creating them. So the first one over on the left hand side, the last one over on the right hand side. As I create a new shot, a new one is added into the sequence. It's a little bit like your slides in PowerPoint. But what we're actually doing here is we're actually building up all of these shots for, uh, for our exploded view. Now once I've got my exploded view, I'm actually on the last shot here. So what I want to do is I want to actually apply some callouts. Now we can create simple callouts or we can create elbow callouts that I'm doing here. All I do is just select the component that I want to create the callout to. An inventor, or inventor publisher will automatically place that callout down there for me. Now at the moment they're all just got manual text entries so I can just go in and edit any of that text. But we want to be a little more dynamic than that. So I can just go and select all of those elbow callouts or balloons, whatever you want to call them. And then from the format ribbon up at the top, I can select which of the inventor eye properties to populate with. And you'll notice I chose part number. All of the part numbers that were determined inside of Autodesk Inventor have automatically been populated into Inventor Publisher. And that's because we have this dynamic link between the data that's in Autodesk Inventor and the data that's in Inventor Publisher. You'll see in a moment, if we make a change inside of Inventor, it makes a change inside of Publisher dynamically. Now I'm just playing through the sequence here, and you'll notice that all the camera translations that, were, that have been made just by me rotating the model. I don't have to set up different camera angles, um, etc. 
Inventor Publisher is intelligent enough to know that as I move the camera angle around that that's the view that I want to take. Now I'm looking at the sequence mode here and you can see that we've got some numbers across the top and the numbers are actually the duration for, the, uh, for that particular slide or for that particular shot. So you can see on the first three or four there I've increased them to be one second. All the others I want to be quite quick at 0.25 of a second. Those little blue icons that you can see above the shots, they're the actual transition type. So how do I want to transition between each shot? And again, you've got different options to, to choose different transition types as we go through. But what I'm actually doing at the moment is I'm inputting some text. And this text is relevant for that particular, for that particular shot or that particular sequence. And the text that I'm actually putting in is the instruction that the person that's watching this actually needs to do. So in this case, I'm just specifying that the wheels should easily slide off the axis. And you can go through all of the different sh shots and sequences to make sure that all the relevant information for each shot is input into those, uh, those description boxes. Once we've got all of those, we've placed all of them down, I can then come and have a look into my presentation and you'll notice that as the sequences go through, those descriptions are automatically shown as well. So we get the action that needs to be required plus the text description to make sure that the, whoever is watching this is fully informed of what needs to be done to assemble or disassemble the particular product. So there's my sequence now. There's my, my disassembly as I require it. Now let's just switch back to Inventor. You'll notice I'm working inside of the clean screen environment inside of Inventor here. So I'll just select the feature that I want to change. And in this case, I'm just going to edit the sketch for the, the light on the top. Just make it a little bit smaller. We'll update that. And then save that assembly. And then as we switch back to Inventor Publisher, on the tools ribbon, you'll notice on the far right there's an update. Just click on update and there you go. It's automatically updated. This doesn't need to be on the same workstation, by the way. We can do this on different workstations. So you can have an engineer working on Inventor on one workstation and a technical illustrator working on another workstation using Inventor Publisher. Now what I've just done there is we can actually output the sequence and this um, this assembly instruction in various different formats and I've just output this as a PowerPoint format and you'll notice that all the snapshots have come through plus all of the text descriptional information that we added in there as well. I'm just using one of the templates that comes with Inventor Publisher by default but you can use your own custom templates for your own company standards. We can also output this as a Word document so again, you can either use any of the templates that come with Inventor Publisher or use your own company-specific template. But very, very quickly, you'll end up with a document that has all of the steps that are required for the disassembly, again, with all of the text, saving a heck of a lot of time and effort if technical illustrations, service manuals, installation guides, etc. are something that you will have to do on a regular basis because Inventor Publisher automates this process for you making it really quick and easily. But what we can also do is also output this directly as a web page. Inventor Publisher will take that sequence and in a very short space of time using the default Autodesk Inventor Publisher template is build a web page that contains a flash animation that you can publish to your own company intranet or website for access by either your colleagues who are maybe going on site to service your, uh, your components or your products or even by your customers. You know, imagine giving customers the ability to access your website, log in and get access to information like you can see on screen at the moment to be able to service components, can service products and get all the relevant information they need. And finally, just to finish this off, this wasn't done in Inventor Publisher, but this was rendered out using Autodesk Inventor Studio. Just to show our forklift toy in use. If you like Inventor Publisher, 
just go to labs.autodesk.com for more information.